This was really a work in progress. Um, we really started thinking about this idea back in 2010. It was our 150th anniversary. Um, we had produced a book, we had a documentary, and we had an exhibit here in Louisville. And we looked at that and thought, people are really interested in that. And so we thought, what else could we do with that? So that sparked this idea of taking our original landmark, which is an icon here in the city, and turning it into a museum. We wanted to tell the story of Louisville water, you know, with the use of getting cleaner water to the city from the river upstream, not the polluted water that were in, was in the city, uh, need for firefighting as well as for manufacturing, you know, how it or what it took to build the waterworks, you know, hiring 500 laborers to do the stone work and dig the original reservoir, which was up on the hill where the VA hospital is now. You know, talking about the two first engineers, uh, Theodore Scout and Charles Hermony, and what they did to build the waterworks. Um, then the filtration experiments with uh, hiring George Warren Filler to figure out in the 1890s what's the best way to filter Ohio River water and to supply a Enough and in an economical manner to the city. You know, the building of the Crescent Hill Reservoir in 1879, and one of the kids' favorite things is the filtration table activity, where we have vials of river water and filtered water and materials, uh, filter materials, the sand, gravel, and coal. And the kids are tasked to see what they can, if they can tell the difference between filtered water and unfiltered water. This is the first large-scale restoration of the original pumping station since the 1970s. So we took off up to 70 layers of paint. We went, looked at all the original brick, we cleaned them. Um, our goal was to take the building to a shell and then use the boilers of the building, where the boilers would have been, and put in what I call the new stuff. So we now have new restrooms, we have a catering prep kitchen, we have a small retail area and install the Waterworks Museum in one of the boiler areas. Um, but what was striking is all the attention to detail 153 years ago that's still here today. You know, the founders of Louisville Water, I think in many ways were brilliant. I mean, they were marketing a product nobody used. People didn't really drink water in 1855, they drank bourbon. You know, a bath was a luxury. And so they could have just put up a concrete building, threw in some steam pumps and said, we're gonna send the city water. But they were really insightful in thinking that we want this to be a destination. We were very careful in the project to make sure that we not only preserve the history, preserve the National Historic Landmark, but took it to the next level. And by that I mean opening it up to the, to the public for rental events, for community events, for a church picnic, and of course the museum that's open to anybody who wants to learn about water but to see the kids in there and how anxious and excited they are to get into the museum and see there. And you know, they just like looking at the pictures and some of the artifacts, a big wrench that we have there that's like three feet long. And uh, Flora's foot, Flora fell over in 1980 in a thunderstorm. Flora, one of the statues that's on the water tower. And some of them were like, ooh, is that a real foot? And no, it's actually a zinc foot, you know, from the statue. They find it fascinating, the history of Louisville water, you know, as fascinating as I find it. Well, you know, water's something we take for granted, but 150 years ago, safe drinking water was sacred because um, it just quite frankly didn't exist. This is where it happened for Louisville. On this site, 1896, Louisville did the landmark experiments in filtration that really set the stage for the entire world to have safe drinking water today. Um, so when you come here, it's, it could be science for you, it could be history for you, um, it could be why in the world are there statues on the water tower, um, it could be how in the world did people pay for water 150 years ago. Um, so it's not just a water geek museum per se, uh, it's really a museum that I think most anyone can find something interesting. And then the beauty of the tour is that you can actually see the actual steam engine today. Louisville Water has a, one of only a handful of all Miss Chalmers steam engines left in the United States. It doesn't operate, unfortunately, anymore. But part of your visit to the Waterworks Museum is taking a look at that steam engine. 
The other part is you actually get to go inside the Louisville Water Tower. So if you ever wondered what is inside that tower, I'll save that for you. When you come to the museum, you can find the answer yourself.